Hey, what's up guys? Rob Arnold here. Welcome to the video. Today, by overwhelming demand, I'm finally going to be checking out and giving my review of Kamira's Crown of Phantoms record, the album that the band made after I left the band, after Matt DeVries left the band, all the other guys, Jim, Chris, had a whole new lineup of dudes um, led by Mark Hunter. Um, you know, obviously Mark's been the singer of the band since the get-go, and um, after some a little bit of turmoil towards the end there and some guys had to drop out, you know, he decided to continue carrying that flag and to make one last record with a new group of dudes, Crown of Phantoms. Story is uh, in the latest episode of Everything You Love, Everything You Love 16, I was asked the question what I thought about the record and the truth was that I had never even checked it out. I still haven't even checked it out. I'm gonna do that today for the first time. I swear that when I hit play on this, it's going to be the first time I've ever hit play on the record. I realized that uh, even though I don't have a Spotify account, um, that, I, that I'm able to check it out through like a Spotify app thing. I was about to buy it. And it's just a shame, you know, that I'm part of this business that, you know, <laughs> Anybody can listen to anything for free pretty much nowadays, but hey, that's the world that we're in. But hey, I'll take advantage of it too. I'm gonna listen to it for free here myself, you know? And, and if I like it, maybe I'll buy it, you know? Uh, Cause I don't think I can this, take this app with me. It's on, on the computer because I'm a distro kid member where I sell like tunes from the elite and the disaster, my other projects and things like that. So anyways, just a, a nice uh, byproduct of, of paying a membership into those type of things. I get to check out the album for free here. And uh, so that's what we're gonna do. Uh, and it's 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 kind of a weird thing because I, I've never done anything like this. I've never like sat and listened to a record and talked about it or given my review of anything like that, or, you know, of a record like this. Um, I had to figure out even how to set up the recording to make this happen. So I hope it turns out all right after all is said and done. But what I'm getting at is I did I just kind of don't know what to do here. Should I just skim through it? Should I listen to the whole thing? I mean, I know that when I make records, I want people to listen to the song from start to finish because it's it's you know, there's everything happens for a reason, you know? And if you don't get to the end of the song, you're gonna miss the huge outro. Or if you don't listen to the middle, you're not gonna hear that sweet bridge that we wrote for some particular reason to tie the chorus and the solo together. And there's there's all these reasons, I think, especially in metal, um, where where the the arrangements are, or orchestrations, um, where you just gotta, you gotta absorb it. I mean, like, can you just listen to little pieces of Opeth and really appreciate it? In my opinion, no, you got to just take it all in. Opeth's one of those bands you got to sit there, you know, and just soak it all in on a road trip or, or just whatever, you know. And then there, there are casual uh, bands and music, too, that maybe you can just put on in the background or at parties or clubs or whatever sort of thing. At any rate, I know that Mark and the guys would want me to listen to the, the tracks in their, in their entirety, but can I do that? I don't know how long is the record, an hour long? Um, you know, should I make the whole video like that? Am, am I going to stop and talk about things? Am I going to talk about it while it's playing? I don't know. I've been trying to think about this for two weeks now, exactly how to do it. And I decided that I'm just going to hit record here on the camera, hit play on the, uh, the Spotify here, listen to the record and see what happens. If I decide to stop it, I decide to stop it. If I decide to skim through, I'll skim through. Chances are, at least what I'm thinking right now is that I'm gonna listen to a little bit of each song, um, skim around a little bit so that the, the, the video doesn't end up being an hour plus long. You know, um, and that's, that's, a, that's a slippery slope as well. There are people that want long videos, there are people that want short videos. I don't know. One thing's for sure, you probably want me to shut up and get to it, so let's do that. First thing, let's take a look at uh, what Wikipedia has to say about the record. Crown of Phantoms is the seventh and final studio album by American metal band Chimera. The album was released July 30th, 2013. It's more than seven years old now. E1, first and only Chimera album to feature Austin Diamond, Jeremy Creamer, Sean Zatorski, Amo Wurstler, and Matt Schlotka, all who joined the band during 2011 and 12 and left the band in 2014. Ben Shigel was on board. Um, I had no idea Mark Lewis was involved with this. Um, Jim Stewart, a local Cleveland guy, Tony Gamala, uh, an assistant over with Ben at, at Spider Studios, been working with him for years. Shout out to Tony. Um, Dan Millis, mastering. I love Dan Millis's masters. You know, the, the tiny bit that I have heard of, um, of Crown of Phantoms, I remember thinking I just liked it had this just smooth top end, like a little bit of icing that, that um, you know, usually happens in mastering. And that made me want to seek Dan out. And I had to master the Elite's Total Destruction album that, um, that, that I did in uh that came out maybe 2018 i think i forget um but dan mills is my guy from now on uh i recommend you guys check him out there at um where's he out of again engine room audio in new york city 
um, obviously. So anyways, just going into this, I know it has an all-star cast on the production team there. All-star players, Emil and uh, Matt, fantastic guitar players. You all know that. Jeremy's a solid bass player that uh, can just hold it down. Austin's simply crazy. He's drumming for Devil Driver now. He's obviously the, de the drummer. Um, on uh, the Elite Total Destruction here, and uh, and we know uh, we know Mark's gonna tear it up. So uh, yeah, um, I suppose let's let's just do it. Oh, lastly, the reason I'm doing this uh, is that, uh, like I said, I had mentioned that uh, I had never heard the record, um, and and said to people, I, I put it out there. Hey, let me know if you'd like to see me do a video like this where I just, uh, you know, listen to the album for the first time and talk about it. And I remember right after I released the video, I was talking to a friend online and um, and she said, hey, you know, or actually a lot of people said, you know, your, your feelings about this record, um, you know, we could tell that, that you're hesitant to do something like this because let me back up for one sec. I had tucked this away for a long time. The reason I had never listened to it is because the breakup for me with Kimura was hard and the fact that they went on and did another record, I had no problem with that, but I just wasn't interested in listening to it. Part of my grieving process, whatever it was, to just tuck everything Kimura away and to just not even think about it. I didn't think about that they were making a record. I didn't think about that they were releasing a record. I didn't think about listening to the record. I just simply didn't care. And that was part of part of it for me, how I dealt with all that. And um, so now a lot of time has passed though. All those feelings are water under the bridge. I'm super cool with all the dudes. Always been cool with all the dudes, you know, it's just, you know, it was a long time period where Mark and I just, you know, it just, sometimes you gotta take a little break to come back stronger and that's what we've done. Kamir did that reunion show in 2017 and that was kind of just, you know, just putting an end to any drama that had happened before and and everything's just super cool now and it's it's just time yeah when I, maybe it's time i'm just gonna check out the record see what i think i know a lot of people also are going to want to um hear like me talk shit on it and stuff like that but that's totally not my style um my, my plan here is to just you know jam it out comment and enjoy it there's no room for negativity it's one thing i love about this channel is that so many everybody just has a positive attitude all the comments are always positive everybody's supporting and interacting giving thumbs up and stuff like that which you could do if i'd shut up right if i'd get to the music anyways let's 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 do that um let's check this out Kamira's crown of phantoms here i'm gonna strap on some headphones here these are some sennheiser hd 280s which i like here nothing special but uh they are nice, and uh, let's give this a crack here. Alrighty, first up, The Machine. So, the album opener. You know, I know Mark put this here for a reason, and uh, we're gonna find out why here. I also wish I could look at the uh, artwork here. Obviously, you know, Kamira always spent a lot of time making the booklets rad and the artwork and the pictures, and just all that kind of stuff. So I guarantee Mark would have done the same, but all I can see here is the cover and it certainly looks cool, intriguing and provocative in some way here. I don't know, is that some like Egyptians and stuff or uh, the eye? Uh, Mark's gonna laugh that I don't know what that is because he's told me a million times. But uh, anyways, here we go. The Machine. I'm hearing it first right now. Guitar tone. time there to listen to Austin's cymbal work. I'm so drawn to it. It's so badass. Yeah. 
so far. I'm not sure exactly what Mark's talking about, but I, I feel like his message is always something about there's the struggle and he talks about a way to get around it or how he's going to get through it or how we should do do something different about it. And maybe he's talking about that. Ooh. So I'm going to stop it. And a couple things I wanted to talk about there. So super tasty solo. Amel, as always, just tasty solos. But check out the riff behind it. Let's try to take your ears off of the solo and listen to that riff. Mark and I used to talk about that a lot. Sometimes it's, the riff underneath a solo is super cool and it's overlooked. You know, a great example, Sepultura, Endangered Species. Check out that riff behind the solo in that song. Killer, one of my favorites. Again, some red symbol work. times before every struggle opens the door so see he's talking about something and then getting past or whatever another thing that's funny that i just thought of though is that anytime i i think i have like like figured out mark's lyrics and i'll ask him about it, he's always like no that is, that's not what it's about at all so i'm probably totally wrong there <laughs> Cool little ending there. So anyway, first thoughts. Cool. Um, great production. Guitar tone sick. Drumming sick. Um, Mark sounds good. That's what I noticed so far. It's your track two. Always one we try to put emphasis on, emphasis on track two as well. I had a big, big heart on for uh, going into Frozen. Uh, what's it called? Uh, Frozen in Time, I think. The second track on the infection, just how the, the way the venom inside ends and we go into Frozen Time. I always love that. Like it's one of those ones that very early in the writing process for the infection during the demos, those two went together and, and I insisted that those stuck together like that just because I like the way they did. They did it. So let's back up. We're still on the end of the machine here. I want to hear how that goes into uh, No Mercy here. See if they put in the emphasis on that with this kind of cool ending at the end of the, mach no, uh, the machine here. into the vocals. On the inside down, consequences feelings, an eternal holocaust, reach for the Sick change. Dead, to the rest, the uncontrollable appetite, to kill the brain. Ooh, I like that. I got some goosebumps there. I almost feel like a wuss saying that, but dude. I saw it dry. No mercy for the heartless. No more lies. No more goddamn Hollywood vampires. Suck it dry. Suck it dry. No mercy for the heartless.
got here? chorus there man i could really get down with this one this song was was powerful super strong i'd say actually much stronger than the first tune lots of sick changes a couple good key changes how you gonna end it Nice. Yeah, that one was killer. All that's left is blood. I feel like I read that this one was a video. Let's see. Take a look to the sky. Everything surrounds us. Yes, and this one was a video. Oh, so was No Mercy. Good movie, huh? Sean Satorsky in there, some, some samples going on, pretty cool. Again, listen to that riff behind the solo. <laughs> Amos the king and just burning up the fretboard there, just super notey, note after note of that sweet, like Egyptian or not Egyptian, gypsy jazz style. Super cool. I think Metallica are the kings of that that riff behind the solo, though. They're always like, not always, a lot of the time, they change keys or have a brand new riff that you never heard throughout the entire song underneath the solo. And that's what made that section so special and why a solo would jump out at you and give Kirk so much room to sing over that stuff because it wasn't just singing over the same riff. So young bands keep that in mind too you know have a different riff for your solo one that fits well and feels good and transitions parts well like these guys are doing here on this record i despise is the king of that shit. Uh... -huh. 
Be nice, Mark. Gonna start skipping here a little bit. Not because I don't like it, but because I just wanna kinda flow through a little bit, see what's coming up, you know? Try to get to as much as we can here. Those chords. I feel like something's lurking around the corner. What are we getting? Come on. surprises there just gonna take it into the next one plastic wonderland oh but first we gotta check out an ad it's like oh good i can kiss oh we gotta watch this ad about your lifestyle all right so i had to skip through a bunch of ads there the ads are still going on just so you know any ads you see in this video are not ads that are part of my thing or anything like that. They're ads that the record label puts in there and anything like this. So if you use any band's music in, in any video, it's it's the label's ads and they collect any revenue from that type of stuff. So I have no control over them. I can't take them out, can't do anything, but uh, that's what you know there. Now, sometimes when you see ads in my other videos, as long as there's no other music from another band or whatever like that, then that does help me out slightly. But we're talking about like a few dollars a month, so it's pretty much nothing or whatever. But, you know, when that, that stuff does add up over the long run and when you're putting videos out, for, you know, lots of them, do, they take a lot of work. It takes a lot of time and effort to do this kind of stuff. And, you know, every creator out there, um, whether they will admit it or not, you know, appreciates, um, you know, some sort of, some sort of recognition for that um, beyond, you know, just people saying how much they like the stuff and everything. But it's nice for all your time and effort to, to you know, see a little something show up in your in your account every once in a while, whether that's big or small. So back to it, Plastic Wonderland here. And uh, while, we're, while I'm talking here, I'll say that um, so far I'm pretty impressed. This whole thing is is definitely solid. Would it um, would it be uh, what people were expecting as as the follow up to the the Camille's Age of Hell? I have no idea. So far, I kind of feel like this is almost like the alternate timeline, the alternate 1985 from uh, Back to the Future 2. You know, uh, those are familiar. Um, you know, the the regular 1985 that Michael J. Fox is trying to get back to is skewed because of 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 a change that's made in the past that alters the course of the future and then there's an alternate 1985 that's what this feels like to me that it's like it's 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 still Kamira. i wouldn't say that they should have called this another rec uh this uh, uh this record another band name or anything like that it's still mark and i know these guys are trying to do the Kamira brand justice and all that and um which is awesome but they they can't they can't physically you know replicated exactly not that they should or anything they're just doing their own thing while trying to pay homage to it especially as new players to the band and everything you know you want to just be respectful at the same time i'm sure they, there was just a lot of emotion going on and they they've done a great job so far but so for me and it's weird for me to even give this analogy too because it's like i'm talking about my own thing here or whatever that I was no that i'm no longer a part of at this time um but anyway so it's kind of like just this alternate version of Kamira, but still super enjoyable. And the fact that everyone's cooking on their instruments and the production is great, how can you not enjoy this? So Plastic Wonderland, let's give it a go. Cool sounds there.
nice bass notes I'm hearing there on the whole record so far. Nice one, Jeremy. Unexpectedly awesome there. Ask Mark what a plastic wonderland is. Anybody know? Let me know in the comments. I wonder what it is. So I'm going to comment again on the riff behind the solo, though. So I'm noticing that that's a trend. Um, whoever is, I'm guessing Emil is mostly responsible uh, for for the uh, the riff writing on the record. I don't know how much Matt contributed. Maybe it's equal. Maybe it's more than Emil. I have no idea. But I'm just guessing that it's Emil. So I, I feel that that's kind of like a, like a style now that I'm hearing that, that he likes to put like, I don't know if I want to call it like Megadeth kind of like sounding riffs behind the solos, you know, kind of, kind of noty and listen, listen to the feels. They're all not, not similar, but they all have this, this, uh, I can't, I don't know the word, what I'm trying to think of, uh, this theme to them. Uh, they, they, they kind of like a similar theme, a feel on the drums and this, and a noty kind of, kind of rhythm behind the solo there. Doesn't that sound like a Megadeth riff? Like it could be a Megadeth riff, I mean, underneath there. Can you take me Reminds me a little bit of like a St. Anger thing there. Interesting concepts in this tune. Avant-garde one there. The transmigration. As the cheetah zero in on the lonely gazelle, the hunt begins. I 
cool synth sound there. I'm guessing that's a synth. I like that. Although I don't know exactly what a transmigration is, this to me sounds like a transmigration. So, aptly titled. Well done, Mark. Mark always had a knack for naming songs and albums and all that. Sometimes at first I'd be like, that's weird or something at least, or maybe unexpected, but in the end, it was always brilliant decisions. Very cool, good acoustic sound there too. I always like Ben's ability to, to record and, and get awesome acoustic sounds. Assuming he's responsible for this, I'm not quite sure. We're heading into the title track, Crown of Phantoms. Cool progression. progressions like that. Super sick. Now again, I want to say when I'm skipping ahead, it's just to keep things moving. Not because I'm not enjoying it. Go. chords. Yeah, a lot of nice dissonance happening there. Super sick. I think that maybe we're getting around 40 minutes here, which is longer than I was 
expecting. So we're kind of going to zoom ahead here and just go uh, check out a few more riffs, wrap this up. I think you guys can tell, you know, that I'm into what I'm hearing here. As I expected, I would. Spineless. Mark's mad at somebody here, honestly. And I don't mean this in a bad way, Mark, but man, it reminds me a lot of worthless. <laughs> worthless and spineless kind of and what you're saying there. So I wonder who you're talking about in those. You'll have to let me know. A lot of these riffs here I'm noticing too have this like Pantera feel to them, almost like a in the reinventing the steel type era. It's a mosher, huh? That one had like like a happier Pantera vibe to it, in my opinion. At Lakeland, oh, 10,000 students damn it. are preparing for future success. Lakeland delivers high quality education. All right, we're probably gonna cut through here. Yeah, uh, I want to hear this Kings of the Shadow World. That sounds like a cool name. So graduates are ready for good local jobs. My Lakeland professors are great. Excuse me. Beer Factory. That's hard. That's awesome. Very cool. Mark says a lot of cool words. And I, I've always stressed that to guys I'm working with in the studio, vocalists I'm working with, and I'm trying to tell, you know, that it, to me at least, and everybody takes in vocals and lyrics and everything uh, differently, but I, I grasp onto like just cool words. And I've noticed a lot of them in this song so far. Mark's always done that. Even these, like I talked about these titles, Kings of the Shadow World, it's intriguing, you know? Parts like this. I like that lead. Yeah, 
I'm sure the solo is badass, we'll hear it too, but listen to the riff behind it. Sick. Watch this. My first like. All right. Oh, no, wait. Sorry, it wasn't that one. Oh, there we go. Man, I got to tell you, that solo section there was definitely my favorite of the record so far. The solo, that lead thing, and, and that riff behind it, that whole feel was dope. The most in this drug-dope dystopia. Catatonic puts us through your mind. Cool stuff, cool little outro there. Couple more wrapped in violence, we'll go through it quick. Ooh. I like that. A little whammy pedal action there, very cool. Oh yeah. We're dying age. We're boiling rage. We'll forever define us. And now your backs against the wall. The burning flame will forever divide us. Welcome to the separation. Say goodbye to your generation. New era of domination. Life is chaos. Rapid fire. Awesome. New era of domination. Sick. Say goodbye to your generation New era of domination Life is chaos wrapped in violence I like that. Favorite track so far. Getting the heart. This one's sinister, I like it a lot. Sounds so good. Very cool. Then you guys get to see a lot of the stuff live. Let me know in the comments how they were. No, fuck everything. The middle finger will forever define us. And now your back's against the world.
cool stuff there. Let's get into the final track, The Closer, Love Soaked Death. Feel there? Love so I like that. Switch guys would be happy with that. Heard a little bit of distortion in here too in the mix. I don't know if it's my system or what. You guys notice that? Little overload. Undeniably crazy good soloing. Emil Wurstler, ladies and gentlemen. Cool sounds. <gasps> That's it. E1 music. That's it. That's how you guys are going to end it, huh? Wait a minute. Where's that coming from? Oh, Gleco just started. Well, there it was, guys. I enjoyed it. I know like so many of you have as well. Um, I, a lot of you guys said that you, you weren't able to give it a chance, kind of like I didn't. So anyways, uh, I'm, I hope this was your chance if you were able to hear and enjoy it with me. I hope so. I hope I could bring that to the people that hadn't heard it yet. To everybody that had, you know, I know you're thinking, yeah, we told you it was good. And now I know. Standout tracks for me. All that's, uh, I'm sorry, No Mercy. I'm going to give that one a heart as well. No Mercy. Kings of the Shadow World. Wrapped in Violence. All cool stuff. Again, I can't say enough about the players. Um, sounds like a... Uh, Great songwriting and production, a killer record. Um, I could see just that, you know, again, if it, if it wasn't what you were expecting as next, as Kamira's next release, perhaps uh, it didn't live up to what you were uh, hoping for, whatever, I don't know. But if you approach it with an open mind, it's a super badass record. Who could deny that, regardless if it was Kamira or not? It's undeniably awesome. So anyways, there it is. I'm glad I finally got this over with and got it done with. Thank you to everybody out there. If you've made it this far and you're watching, everybody that encouraged me to make this video, again, I'm glad it's out of the system now. I know I'll probably talk to Mark and Austin and the guys after this and, uh, you know, 
It would have been nice to have him on here, but he, uh, again, I'm sure the video is long as hell by this point. So thank you again to everybody uh, who's checked it out and stuff like that. If you're interested in supporting the channel, you know, pick up one of my DVDs. Check out my Kemper profile pack with Tone Crate if you want to get those classic Kimura tones. Won't be any from the Crown of Phantoms era, but they'll be from my era, uh, you know. Or um, check out my Patreon campaign um, where you can uh, support the, the, the channel at a greater level. Hope to see you guys on the next video. I'll talk to you soon. Cheers.